Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Stamp It Up with Jamie this Wednesday evening. Thank you for joining me. If you're catching this on replay or on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm just going to get going here, make sure I'm live in the right place, and then we'll get going. Oh, I don't have my card out. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I forgot to do that. Um, my computer. Okay, there we are. Whew. My computer was giving me a little trouble earlier, so I wasn't sure... Um, if like the Wi-Fi was working and such. So <clears throat> tonight I have this card here for you, <laughs> here for you. Um, I just got it yesterday or was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Um, and so <laughs> this is the first time I'm using it um, right out of the packaging, opening it up. It's kind of fun to use brand new product and um, kind of like think of creative ways to use it. Um, so what I used, hi Amy, good evening is the Buy the Doc Bundle. This is a bundle that can be found in Stampin' Up's 2020 January to June mini catalog. And uh, it's got this fun sort of scene that you can create using um, the doc, a rowboat. Um, then you have some like cute, like we have a frog and a little fishy and a bird um, and really great sentiments. I'm always a sucker for good sentiments. Uh, but I might have solely bought this for the paddle here, <laughs> um, quite honestly, because I know I can use this in scrapbooking. Each year, my family and I um, go rafting, and so I'm always looking for something, and I thought this paddle was perfect. Um, so I'm really excited to be able to use it for scrapbooking as well as uh, just for card making and whatnot. Good evening, everyone. Hi, ladies. And what I like about the card in, in the um, stamp set in general is I think you can really use this as a masculine for masculine cards, which can be challenging, um, as we know, because uh, they don't get all blinged out and dazzled up. So, uh, but you can really create this nicely for a masculine card, which I really like. And it includes a happy birthday sentiment, which you always need a good happy birthday sentiment. And the font is really pretty here. I like the script that it uses. So um, let's just start in here. Oh, let me show you the dies. So that's the stamp set. And then the dies are dockside dies. Oops. Oops. Hold on. They got stuck. There we go. And those look like this. So um, let's see here. This cuts out like the big dock and then the rowboat, <laughs> like a leaping frog here. Uh, that's for the sitting frog. And then this here we're going to use tonight is what I used for like the little green bit there. So... Let me get organized here and we'll dive in. Okay, so this is Knight of Navy cardstock. It's four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half, kind of our standard um, size. Knight of Navy, if I didn't say that. And then what you're going to do is, well, sure. Well, I'm like, where do I want to start? Um, hi, Carol. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I have a piece of balmy blue cardstock, and I'm matting it on Whisper White. The balmy blue is three and a half by three and a half, and then the Whisper White is just one eighth bigger, so uh, three and five eighths by three and five eighths. Nope. Yes, three and. <laughs> I'm second guessing myself. Yes, three and five eighths by three and five eighths. Uh, so, uh, I guess. Well, let's wait. I want to do my these bits here first. So you're gonna need a piece of Whisper White cardstock. Um, hi, Judy. Good evening. And we're going to start off by stamping the dock and the robo. I have so many stamps blocked up here. Um, and the robo in Memento Black ink. Now, while we're at it, we might as well just stamp everything that needs to be stamped in Memento Black ink and get that out of the way. Hi, Sandra. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it tonight. So these are going to be cut out with those coordinating dies so basically stamp them wherever just to have some form of reference to coloring them in hi Kay. hello hello oh thank you so much carol for sharing it i appreciate it feeling the love so that's the robo this would be our dock okay and then we gotta do our frog he's so cute He's just sitting there, enjoying the, enjoying the day. Okay, we need a frog. Um, I already did the birds ahead of time because they're just, they're not colored or anything. So I did those already. What else am I missing? Oh, this little, um, what do you want 
call it? Like pasture? No, it's not a pasture. I don't know. What would you guys call that? It's like the little bit next to the riverside, I guess. I don't know. Um, okay, so what I did for this, because I wasn't quite sure the dimensions I was going to need. So I just kind of, um, how did I do it? I think I did that. <laughs> and then I, I'll show you how I figured that out. Maybe there's a more technical way to figure out exactly how much you need there, but I couldn't figure it out. So um, that's how I handled that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be coloring with our Stampin' Blends. So let's do, we'll do the, the rowboat first. I colored it in with our Soft Suede Stampin' Blends markers. I do love the Stampin' Blends. I say it a lot. You're very familiar with this. Oh, sure. There you go. Wow. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> I'm like, uh, pasture? It's definitely not a pasture. Oh, my goodness. Um, light. Okay, so I start with the light one. I do love these sample blends. They're very user-friendly. I'm not a huge fan of coloring. I know it's very in right now, but I, I don't have the patience for it. I kind of just like to slop the the color on um, and not have to put too much thought into it so these are very forgiving uh, I highly recommend their blends there's so many different colors again I'm using the soft suede I started off with the light soft suede with the brush end and now I'm going to come in with the dark soft suede and just add some um, dark lights to it not low lights they're dark lights and there is a little bit of shading already on the dock, so I'll show you that. But it kind of helps you know like where there may be shadows. So let me show you here. So where's my scissors? So right here, see how there's like little tiny lines and over here too? Those are kind of indications that there would be a shadow there. So it kind of takes the thought process out of it if you're quite unsure. Is this the dark? That is the dark. I meant to grab the light. Um, if you're unsure, you know, where to put a dark, um, dark in it and where to lighten it. So I added some dark spots and now I'm just coming through back with the light to just kind of blend it all together. Again, your markers will blend best when, um, the ink is still wet. So don't wait too long to start, um, blending them together. And that's what we're left with. Okay. Now we're going to do our dock. Shore, dock, boat. I have to, I'm not good with these things. Uh, okay, so I'm using crumb cake. Again, I'm going to start with the light uh, and the light marker and the brush end. Just because I'm covering a lot of space, it's just easier to get it colored in with the brush. It was, if I was doing something more intricate, I would definitely use more the fine tip. But I'm not, so I can kind of be quick about this. This is the light crumb cake. And then I'm gonna come back with the dark one. And this one doesn't really have, although it does down here, have the little um, markings to help you know how to shade it. Uh, but if you're ever unsure, uh, you could always look on the catalog. There's lots of good, you know, hints uh, about this one in particular how to color it in where you might put a shadow and where you might leave it a little on the lighter side so I'm coming back in with the light crumb cake to kind of color in and blend in nicely those as you can see I don't <laughs> I don't overthink it by no means I don't think I colored my things in I don't overthink it just get the ink just get the ink get the I don't think I colored that one over here. This one's still white. Oh dear. I would have had a one of the poles still white and not colored in. Okay. So that's my dock. And I'm leaving my bird white. Okay. Then Mr. Froggy here. He's so cute. I'm using old olive. And again, starting with the light old olive. Careful not to color his eyes. Well, I guess you could color his eyes if you wanted to, but I didn't. The light old olive then coming back this time i'm going to use the fine tip of the dark old olive because i want a little bit more control the froggy's kind of small so we don't want to overwhelm them and that's that now for this guy here 
what I did is I colored it and I just colored out. Now, I know I'm gonna end up trimming this down, but I colored him in anyways, just cause I had my marker out already and it was just easier. I apologize if you hear that in the background, that's my heat turning on. <laughs> it's cold here in upstate New York. So that was the light old olive, this is the dark. And again, I'm just kind of following the markings that were that are already there, like so. And then there is, oh boy, what are those things called? Wow, I am drawing a complete blank. What are those things called? The cattails? Cattails, right? I think that's a cattail. I don't know. If it's not, I colored it as a cattail. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so that's there. <laughs> so I did um, use just the soft suede to color in the tip of that a little bit as well. So I'm gonna have to cut it out. So you're gonna have to just bear with me here as I get my dies. So I'm gonna need this guy and this guy and this guy. Have you ever taken out so many dies and then when you go to put them back, you're like, um, how did they all fit? Or in like catalogs ago when we had the wooden, um, wooden ones and then you like took them out and you're like, I have no idea how to, it's like a whole, like a puzzle. Okay, so I'm just using my dye machine, my dye cutting machine over here out of sight to cut out my my uh, images here. So give me a second, let me just cut them out quickly. I thought about doing it ahead of time, but I figured it wouldn't quite be the same. So there's our dock. Oh, cattails, okay, good. I'm always like, is that the right word? I think that's the right word. <laughs> I second guess myself. Because what was it last week or the week before I was calling the beehive, the honeycomb, I was saying it all wrong. So I don't, I don't trust how I call things. <laughs> okay, this is the boat. Oops. Come here. Oh, it's a little not centered, but that's okay. And then lastly, we have the frog. Oh, so keep in mind when you are using our new dies that you have to get a tight hold on i gotta cut this down because my thing is moving it all over a place the new dies are tight fitting so when you're trying to line it up the old ones would have like a little white line around them these don't so you have to go right up to it almost like right on the on the outline of it for it to uh, cut it. Obviously, I was rushing a little bit, so that one's a little off, but it's not, it's, it's doable. It works. Okay, this is our little froggy. Come here, froggy. Oh, he's so cute. Okay, and last but not least, um, should I cut that out now? I think I'm gonna cut it. So this is the little edge thing. It is part of the dies and it cuts out the outline of our scene, this guy here. But I think I'm gonna <laughs> give him my haircut, make him easier to cut. And then you'll see what that looks like. This one's a little trickier because it kind of runs off. You'll see one of the samples in the catalog actually um, has like a continuous shore. Like they stamp it twice and then cut it twice, which is kind of fun. You just have to kind of line it up right and you'd be fine to go, ready to go. So you can't really see it, but well, maybe you can, but I did cut it out. I'm gonna snip it in a second, but at least, am I die, done die cutting? I am. Okay, good, I'm done. <laughs> Get that all out of the way. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on this um, <laughs> balmy blue. I almost called it seaside shore. Balmy blue cardstock. And what I'm actually going to do is you're going to see in the original boat is attached these ripples. That is actually part of the row boat. They're not two separate stamps. And I wanted the ripples on, on here. I cut out the row boat so it cuts out the ripples, but I still wanted it. So what I did, oh, I gotta clean this because I used black. Hold on, let me just clean my, my robo. Okay, I'm using everything that's stamped on 
The Balmy Blue is stamped in Night of Navy. And first, I'm just gonna kind of get an idea of positioning. Because <laughs> what I was doing earlier by accident is to compensate, I was kind of tilting my dock a little bit, but then I realized that's not accurate because then my bird is all, all weird. So kind of have to visualize where everything's gonna be stamped. Uh, this would be a great time to use your Stamparatus, but I just thought of that now, so I didn't do it earlier. So I have my rowboat and sort of, he's going to go there. Now he's going to be covered, but you're at least still going to see the ripples, which I think are just a really cute addition to the scene here. And then I also used this guy here that just adds more ripples. And there wasn't much rhyme or reason to where or where I stamped them other than just kind of like some here and some there. I will say that try not to rock when you're stamping because it'll make your lines a little thicker than maybe you want them, like that. <laughs> and one there, and I think I did one on here. Okay, again, that's all in Night of Navy. Actually, while I'm at it, I'm gonna stamp the sentiment and then I'll show you how I did that. I'm using the Here For You and I'm just gonna stamp that on a piece of scrap Whisper White. Oh, hold on. Better, okay. So when you stamp, oh, let me close this up. Just really be careful that you don't rock. I do it all the time. It's hard not to, but if you, if you ever so slightly move, you're gonna get almost like a smudge, a thicker piece of lettering. So you can see it here with my here is thicker than my U. So try and just go straight down and straight back up and you'll get a more crisp damp like that one. Let me cut that out because we're gonna need that in a second, but I might as well have done it while I still had my ink out. And this one, we're just gonna do that. Okay, okie dokie. So with this, what I did is I wasn't quite sure how I wanted it to be positioned. I knew I kind of wanted it pretty much like almost off the page and just ever so slightly tucked into the corner there. And I knew I wanted this piece and this piece to touch the edge of my cardstock here. So I kind of aligned it and then I flipped it over and I cut it out. Again, I'm sure there's a much easier way to go about this. <laughs> Let me know. There has to be, but this made sense in my head. That way I knew exactly how much to, the position, because I didn't want it too far over. So again, I'm left with a little piece there. So you just got to come back with your, you could, I guess I could have left it all not colored and then colored it at the end. That would work too. Okay. So now let's just start start getting things down first things first is my shore I'm learning it's not a pasture okay oh my heat just went off and that's gonna go adhered in the corner here this is actually even more than my sample here it's a little bigger um, next is my is this it please tell me okay my rowboat that's how I do that type of corner piece too oh okay good Really? I just feel like there has to be an easier way, though, don't you think? <laughs> Something, I don't know, more obvious. Well, at least, at least I'm not the only one that thought of it to do it that way. So my robo, actually, I'm not going to do my robo first. I'm going to do my dock, which I have no clue what I did with. Oh, my. Hold on, it's here somewhere. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Did it fall? Hold on, hold on. This is this. Oh my goodness, I have no clue what I did with the dock. Oh, here it is. Whew. That was close. So I'm gonna do the dock first. So I'm gonna use the Stampin' Dimensionals to give it a little bit of a lift. And then I do have mini dimensionals here just for that little bird there. So he's kind of secured and not flapping all over the place. Peel it off. Oops, oops, oops. Come on. Okay. 
Now again, just make sure your bird is straight. <laughs> make sure he's not. And then you kind of want to eyeball because you want your bird straight, but then you also want it touching the rowboat here. Like that. That's why I wanted to do the dock first. And then next I'll do my rowboat, which again is adhered down using dimensionals. And I'm just going to layer right over where I stamped the Knight of Navy rowboat. Um, this is where those, that clipper, not the clipper, what are those things that crafters use? <laughs> it like holds it for you? Maybe a square die, that's probably more trouble than it's worth. Oh, okay, well then I guess we'll just continue um, as I did it. Okay, and then last but not least, we have the little froggy, which I used mini dimensionals with as well. Over here in the corner, he's sitting and waiting patiently. He's so cute. Um, <laughs> I might put him more like that since I have a bigger piece of grass for him to sit on. Tweezers, there you go. I am, so <laughs> you must think that I have no clue what I'm talking about because I get so like, I don't know the name of that. <laughs> Tweezers. Okay, so this is gonna get adhered over my Whisper White. Oops. Again, it's just one eighth bigger. And then I did add a few birds, which are so cute. These guys I didn't use any dimensionals for. I just glue down with some liquid glue here. And I stamped them just in the memento black. I didn't color them in or anything. Memento black and then cut them out. The 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 dies there have a, a die for them. So I did one kind of this way. And then one kind of more up. Okay. Now, this is where things get a little busy. That's how I'm gonna word it, busy. So I have my card front here. Oh, thanks, Linda. Thank you so much. My Knight of Navy cardstock. Now, I can do one of two things. If you don't mind watching, what I did in my original card here is I cut out a ton of these uh, oars. Hold on, I'm trying to grab them for you. And I glued them all down um, on the card front. It actually doesn't take too, too long because you don't have to put ores where this is so you're basically just putting ores on the bottom around the side and then at the top and these are nice because if you look i don't know if the light's going to pick it up but there is a texture to it there's a texture to the paddle and it's just really fun i think these ores are super cute super adorable so i think i can do it quickly and i'd like to show you how i did it it's nothing like you know super <laughs> genius but so what I did is I took a pencil and I just outlined the box not the box yeah I guess the box of my scene here because there's no sense in a wasting the cardstock or wasting the time or effort um in putting anything here because you're not going to see it it's just a waste now if you find it easier to do that way and you're very patient then by all means I <laughs> am not. <laughs> so what I did is I just cut out and I, I don't know if it'll end up being the same. I did cut out some extras for, for the live here, just in case I ended up using more. Um, but in my sample here, I ended up using um, 13, 13 ores I cut out. Now, silly me, I'm such a dummy. Um, there's actually two ores. And I didn't see that first, so I literally cut 13 out of this ore. <laughs> but there's actually two, so you can make it, it go a lot faster. Um, again, I just didn't realize that <laughs> until I was getting ready to go live. And I was like, oh my goodness, that would have gone a lot faster had I known. But whatever. So um, I just kind of layer them up. Having Oh, I bet you have a hard time seeing that. Do you have a hard time seeing that? Because it's color on color. Um, I just put liquid glue and I glue them down, even letting them kind of hang off. Kind of so they're nestled. So I have them going like this, then like that, then like, whoops, well, I guess it doesn't matter if it's upside down, like that. So I kind of know this piece, the paddle end has to go near the handle end. <laughs> you want to make this go? Oh, I'm so glad you like it. Good, good, good. Whew. That always makes me feel so good. Uh, I always like to, I don't know, I hope you find the video helpful and inspirational. 
that's for sure. And then that one there. So again, if you, if this, you're like, oh my goodness, that is so tedious. I never want to do that. Then you could use the paddle in the stamp set. And it's, I thought about doing that instead, just stamping um, your paddles. You could use, I don't know if it fits it, like measuring wise, if the Stamparatus would work, but if not, just, um, where is it? This guy here. You could just stamp. Do, 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 do a background of stamping. But what I want to tell you, my trick is, I don't know if it's a trick, but what I do is I leave them hang off and then I snip them and then no sense in wasting. I use those little bits on the opposite side. So over here, I need what I just cut off. Ah, you guys can't really see. So here, this part is there. So that's what I use. So I try not to waste a whole lot if I have little bits that I've cut off I try and use them on the other side so like that will go there this one I whoops oops oops this one I just gave, chopped off as well those tweezers I need them they would be very helpful right now so like that does that make sense oh good Karen I'm glad you like it hi Terry thank you for joining me okay so if you see my, I don't know, can you see it? My square there, starting here on up. So I basically did three rows of like full ores and then starting my way up, um, I'm just using little pieces. I'm literally just like trying to figure out, I pretty much can cut them all in half and glue them down. So I know that little bit goes there. So this is where it gets a little tedious, but I really thought it would be fun for you to watch me do it. I don't know. And then we need a little piece here. Oops. And again, if this isn't your thing, you're like, that's just way too tedious, way too time consuming. You most certainly can just um, use that stamp. And I would probably do color on color. I'd probably do the Night of Navy on uh, Night of Navy stamping because it gives a nice background. Um, like that and then I'm going to snip those and use them on this side if that makes sense and this goes here just make your way up this goes kind of faster once you get at this point because like I said you're, you're not going through the whole thing that's partly why I cut a wider panel <laughs> because I knew it would take up more room and I would have to not do this quite as much and actually I originally had even a bigger panel but I trimmed it down a little bit so um, keep in mind that this is, that celebration is going on right now. So I'd have to look how much this one is. It might qualify you for a free um, stamp set. So ready, we're gonna flip it over and then snip, snip. Just be careful because, not be careful, be, be mindful that these now have glue on them. <laughs> these little pieces have glue. See, they're sticking. So I'm just gonna follow. So I did paddle here, and then next I have to do with that fit. That my little that little bit might actually fit. Um, I think it will. Wow. Woo! That fits like perfectly. It's super small, but it fits. And then now I have to do a little paddle. I'm sorry, guys. This is taking so long. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. Uh, <laughs> me watching me do this um let's see here i think i'm gonna cut this one the thing is also you will have glue all over your fingers oh there you go 40 amy you're so on top of it <laughs> me i'm just like i think maybe and you're like bam so the bundle is 42.25 so if you were to buy the bundle and then add um a packet of cardstock that should do it my math right and keep in mind that you kind of want to stay at the same um line like they should line up if not when you get here at the top you're going to have them a little off not the end of the world but it's just easier to keep them sort of lined up add some cardstock in your FFG. okay perfect i was thinking cardstock would do it you could buy knight of navy cardstock it's one of my favorite colors i use it 
so, so much. And I love how it's part of the neutral family. It's considered a neutral, which I'm all about. I love it. I think blue is one of my favorite colors. Okay, so I gotta keep, I think I did two more rows and I think I might be good. And that one. So I think I ended up cutting 15 just to be safe. see how many if I have leftovers at the end. Uh, I need a paddle. Oh, <laughs> I got so much, so much glue on my fingers right now. <laughs> okay. Actually, I probably could, could cut that one in half and have it be enough for two. Because I'm really going over, in. Okay, so... There's that. Let me do a little trimming. Trim, trim. Ah, you will need to clean your scissors afterwards because there is glue on them. Um, glue on the cardstock. You inevitably will end up with glue on your scissors. Okay. So all I have is one last little line up here. And so what I'm going to try and do is mirror this one. It just so happens, and it did. I was afraid maybe, you know, replicating it, it wouldn't quite be the same, but it is true. It actually follows that same one that I started off with, the very, oops, the very first one. So I'm going to put it in the middle. Ooh, that barely fits there, but it does. And then I need a little, this piece. Is that right? Why doesn't that look right? Hold on. No, I'm wrong. Ah, take it off, take it off, quick, quick, quick. And this one goes here. <laughs> okay, whoo, that was close. So then we need a full one. I'm looking at it going, that's not right. And then this one will go here. I feel like that's not right either. Oh well, it's fine. No one, wh whoever gets the card isn't gonna say, um, you didn't line them up right. <laughs> I reject your card. Okay, let me just clean my scissors here. Oh my goodness, I'm covered in glue. Definitely use tweezers if you have them. And let me just quickly snip these and we'll move on. Snip. I find it's better if you snip from behind because you're more likely to get a close snip, so. This one needs a little bit more glue. There. And try not to use excessive glue because it will leave a little bit of a shine. Not, again, the end of the world, you can kind of see over here where um, I have some dabs of glue and they left a sort of mark. Okay. Whew, that was fun. <laughs> okay, let's adhere this down. I'm gonna use Stampin' Dimensionals and what I'm going to do is actually put the dimensionals straight onto my card here. If I were to put the dimensionals on here, some of them may overlap my oars and then it wouldn't be even. So I'm gonna put my dimensionals right on my card and I'm gonna kind of put them around where my oars are. So I know they're not in the way. Oh, <laughs> don't forget to peel them. My tweezers is always on my table for just this reason. I hate getting sticky. I am so like, I am just sticky. <laughs> I didn't peel one. Okay. Ah, I'm so sticky. I can't get the dimensional stickers off my fingers. Okay, use tweezers. <laughs> That's my PSA for the night. Use tweezers. Don't do as I did. Okay. And then you can kind of eyeball it according to the pencil lines that you had before. And that's what you're left with. I love the oars. I love them. I just think they're so, so fun. I honestly just want to make a card of oars. <laughs> okay. So I got this far and I went, oh, I love it. I just, I'm so happy with how it came out. And then I went, oh my goodness, I didn't leave a spot for the sentiment. What am I going to do? I can't stamp here because I have all these or there's too much uh, texture. And this is pretty busy. I'm like, I could put the sentiment here, up here, but it just seemed like there was enough going on. Um, so what I decided to do is 
fussy cut out the sentiment according to the curves of the script. Um, a script like this is, you know, you could do a rectangle, I think would be really pretty. But I think when you cut along the script and you fussy cut it, it just emphasizes the beautiful uh, texture in the script. So let me just clear my scissors here. <laughs> I'm so sticky. My workstation is too. <laughs> Keeping it real, huh? Keeping it real. So I'm going to go slow when you're fussy cutting and leave, I don't even know how much of a distance, but a distance. Don't go right up next to the word. And every time there is a curve, just follow it. Like that. And then a little one for the F. I didn't do this ahead of time too. I guess I could have, but it's so much more fun to do live. <laughs> and again, for something like this, I highly, highly recommend our paper snips. They're just super sharp and they're a nice size, really uh, enabling you to get into the tight spots, especially in like a word like this or tight spaces. And just follow it all the way around. I'm going to step that off. So see. I don't do this often, but it's really pretty. Need to get an Aura's embossing folder. <laughs> oh my gosh, Lou, that's funny. That would be a lot faster now, wouldn't it? <laughs> you thought it was a die. Oh, you thought this was a die? Oh no. That would be fun though, wouldn't it? No, it's just me fussy cutting. Which I, I know some people feel very strongly against, <clears throat> Amy. But... You just go slow and take your time. You have to take your time. If you're rushing, it's not going to do well. I don't think you would ever find Amy and I doing that. <laughs> oh, you too, Karen? I thought you didn't mind fussy cutting. I guess I learned that. I knew Amy hates it. Don't mind my fingers. I have glue all over my fingers. Okay. And then I'm almost done. Is anybody stressed watching me do this? Does this stress you out or does it relax you? Because it's it's kind of relaxing to me. But I know if you don't like fussy cutting, this could be like torture. I'd never try it. <laughs> You'd never try it? Oh, that makes me sad. Well, that's why they have good rectangle dies. Okay, there we go. If you don't like fussy cutting, use one of our rectangle dies. If you don't mind it, I think this is a beautiful way to show up, the, show off the script. I'm, done, I'm stressing you out. That's hysterical. I figured that. You, if you don't like fussy cutting, that has to be like nerve wracking to watch. Um, I used mini dimensionals again. And it's like the dock of dimensionals. <laughs> There's so many dimensionals on the card. You're stressed just watching, Linda. Oh my gosh, you guys are hysterical. <laughs> I'm going to have to fussy cut more often. <laughs> Don't stress. I'll do the work. Okay. And again, because this was pretty busy, I was like, I could put it here and I think that's nice. Um, or I could put it up there and I like that, but I don't know. I decided to tuck it down here all by itself like so and there you go all done so you know if you're very patient you can do the oars if you want it faster just stamp them um, but just a really fun card I think you could easily put down here the happy birthday sentiment and give it to um, one of the guys in your life and whatnot I think this is a great kind of must-have right now and even better during celebration right now which goes until the end of March so definitely let me know if you have any questions um, I'd be happy to help and answer them in any way possible so thank you so much for joining me tonight I hope I didn't stress you out I hope it was relaxing <laughs> and I'll catch you next week everyone thank you so much bye-bye